Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be planting seeds and boy do I have a lot of seeds here. All the seeds I have on the table in front of me were sent in by viewers so thank you very much. These are seeds from all over the world of all kinds of exotic tree species. At least they're exotic for me. The weather is going to be sunny and warm for at least the next three days so it's a perfect time to plant seeds and I'll have to keep them in the greenhouse so the birds and the squirrels don't dig up the seeds and eat them. For me part of the excitement of bonsai is watching a seed develop into a tree. It's a fascinating process. I have a lot of my trees that I did start from a seed so let's review those now. My very first bonsai, my ficus microcarpa here, was started from a seed many many years ago, 28 years ago. So it's been exciting watching it develop from nothing to something. My orange tree in here, this one right here, that was started from a seed again about 25 years ago. My bullhorn acacia here was started from a seed not very long ago, just a couple of years old. Many of my native red maples were started from seeds and again they're very young trees. My poplar here, that was started from a seed just a few years ago. These pomelos were started from a seed just a couple of years ago. My Manitoba maples here were started from a seed uh, about 15 years ago. Many of the trees in my avatar grove were started from seeds. All the ones in the back row are all seedlings. Many of the ones up front here were started from seeds. So it's kind of exciting watching them develop over the years. My royal oaks here, or English oaks, were started from seeds. This lemon tree was started from a seed many years ago. The little cedars on the rock here began as little seedlings, eh, maybe about five years ago. The birch behind it here, that was started from a seed. My baobabs here, were started from a seed just last year. My monkey ear trees were all started from seeds just a couple of years ago. And you can see they're getting quite developed. My Osage orange forest here was started from seeds. This will be their third year in development and they're coming along nicely. My acacia trees back here were all started from seeds. You can see them in there and they're all doing well. In the greenhouse here I have a tray and most of the stuff in the tray is either seeds or cuttings. This is from a seed, those are from seeds. Seed. Over here is my Delonyx regia. That was started from a seed. My mimosa up here. That was started from a seed. I think this is its third year. It's doing well. It's starting to get a bit of a trunk on it. Many of the trees that I'll be planting today are species that you just couldn't buy in a nursery anywhere around here or maybe not even on this continent. So they're kind of special, these seeds. About half the seeds I'll be planting today are hardy seeds so they can, you know, stay outdoors in the winter or at least, you know, they need that cool period in winter. And about half are tropical trees that need to stay warm the entire winter. So I've already stratified the hardy seeds. So I've given them a cool period over the winter and now I put them all together so I can plant all the seeds now. Uh, there may be some seeds that I need to scratch the seed coating on. And planting seeds, you have to look at the individual species. So I would recommend you look it up online, uh, see what's the recommended way of germinating the seeds. You know, if you have to stratify them, scratch the coating, sometimes people boil them in water. There's all kinds of methods, like some trees, the uh, seed cone needs a fire to open up the seed pods. There's all kinds of special cases. So I recommend you look it up online before you start any seeds. I'm going to plant all the seeds in either seed trays or pots, and then I'll place them in the greenhouse for germination. In the greenhouse, the trees will stay nice and warm. I can put the heater on at night if I need to, and they'll stay nice and humid so the seed trays won't dry out and they're protected from mice, birds, squirrels, whatever wants to eat the seeds. In the past, I've planted entire seed trays with 
hundreds of seeds and the next day I come out and the squirrels have dug them all up and eaten them. So I had that with acorns. I planted all these acorns and the next day they were all gone. That was, I was very disappointed. So in the greenhouse, they'll stay. There goes the little bunny. I find when you join a bonsai society, there's always people in the club that are propagating. They're uh, planting cuttings and seeds and they're very happy to give them out to new members. And I mean, I really appreciated it when I first started out in bonsai getting, you know, trees to start off with, uh, seedlings and cuttings. It was a fantastic way to start into the hobby. And I really appreciate those people who do the propagation. These seeds I'm planting today, I mean, if I live 20, 30 years, I'll be doing really, really well. So I, uh, you know, I might see them grow into a nice tree, but not, you know, a really old mature bonsai. But uh, the fun is just watching them develop. I, I enjoy watching seedlings sprout. I think it's exciting. And then getting the first leaves and, you know, the little steps of transforming a seedling into a something that looks like a tree is just, to me, that's the joy of bonsai. Well, it's the morning time and I'm hungry. So I'm going to start today by planting my baobab seeds that were sent to me from Hawaii. And there's a pulp inside them. This one's already been eaten, but there's a pulp inside that I can have for breakfast. And then I'll extract the seeds and get them planted. Here's the three seed pods I have to extract the seeds from. So that'll be exciting getting those planted. Here's a look at my baobabs. So these trees were started from seeds last summer and they were sent to me by Tom from the YouTube channel Grow and Clip Bonsai for Seniors. So I planted five of them and I got two to germinate. So I was really happy to get some. Here's the uh, pods that Jacob sent me from Hawaii. I split one open last year and ate it. And there's a playlist for these baobab trees so you can follow along their progress. So this is how many seeds you get from one seed pod. And uh, so quite a few. And some of the seeds are kind of like uh, some kind of like double seed. I don't know if I just have to separate them or... But anyway, lots to plant. And then today I'll be opening these, si these seed pods up and eating the fruit. And we'll plant all these baobab seeds. The reason I didn't plant these last year is the weather was too cool. So right now, you know, it's just beginning to get summer-like. The uh, temperatures are nice and warm in the daytime. So I think they'll germinate really well. Part of the fun of bonsai is researching the trees, seeing what area in the world they grow in and what's the climate like that they grow in, what the trees are used for. So yeah, it's more than just growing bonsai. It's learning about the world. So I'm going to open up this seed pod and they're really fuzzy on the outside. They feel really good. <laughs> it's almost like uh, velvet. I'll try using this spoon and kind of pry it open. Start from this end. Here it comes. There it is. So there's the pulp inside and it's really good. It's like dessert. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. It's like a, a really subtle, sweet, creamy flavor. And the seeds are in the pulp. You just clean them off. Oops, set them aside. Oh, I love the fruit. I finished eating the pulp from the baobab fruit here. So that's how many seeds I got out of the second one. And this pod was a little smaller than the first one. So I got a few less seeds, but that's plenty of seeds for me to plant this spring. I'm going to keep the other two pods in reserve just in case disaster strikes. Like, you know, I had that squirrels take all my acorns in one year. So I'll keep these as backup and I'll plant all these. Baobab seeds have a really hard, tough seed coating on them. It's waterproof. Um, it allows these seeds to stay in the soil for many, many years. And then, you know, the seed coating slowly decomposes. And then someday in the future, rain comes and they germinate. 
So we're going to speed up the process. I'm going to file or sand off that seed coating or reducing it down at least so it's not as thick and then I have to soak the seeds for 24 to 48 hours. I've got a file here and you can use sandpaper or anything and I'm going to scratch away at that seed coating thinning it down and then after I've got that I'm going to soak it. They recommend you throw the seeds in boiling water so I'm going to heat up some water to boiling, put it in the thermos, let it cool for a little bit, and then put the seeds in there. And they recommend you keep the water warm, um, quite hot. So I think the thermos will work. I'll change the water maybe every 12 hours and you know, put fresh hot water in. And I think that'll do it in 24 to 48 hours. They should show a little, the start of the root sticking out from the seed and then I can plant them in soil. I'm going to use vice grips on these seeds. They're hard to hold. They get kind of shiny as they lose that pulpy coating. And when you're filing, sometimes they pop out of your hand and I don't want to lose it after all that work filing down the seed coating. So I'm going to grip it with the vice grips. I'm not gonna like crush the seed or anything. I just gotta get it in there so I can hold it a bit. Get the right, right amount of tension here. Well, that's good there. So now I can file away the seed coating without fear of the seed popping out of my hand. Never thought I'd use vice grips for a bonsai, but here we are. So they say to file the seed coating down quite thin. I think that's good. Once water gets into the seed, the seed coating becomes quite soft once it gets impregnated with water. So I think that's good for that seedling or that seed. So there's one that can go in the water. And I'm going to put it in a just a cup for now until I transfer it to the thermos just to start that soaking process. Okay, my first seed can go in the water and I used rainwater. Um, You'll notice that the seeds will swell up. They'll get, uh, you know, two to three times the size of the dried seed like this after soaking. So it sank to the bottom. That's a good sign. If you have a seed that, you know, an insect's gotten through the seed coating and eaten the inside out, they'll float. So those aren't good seeds. Don't bother planting those. So they should sink to the bottom of the pot. I'm sure the germination success rate depends a lot on this preparation. You know, if you did your prep work really w well and thoroughly, I think you'll have a really high success rate of germination. If, you know, you skip on some of the steps or don't do them very well, I think you'll have a low success. And I think, you know, the time of year you plant them, it's gotta be warm and hot out, has a big factor, or a big, is a big factor on this success. As you start filing through the seed coating, it gets a lighter color. So that's when you know you're down to about the right level when you start getting a light brown in the middle there. If you can see that. All right, there's another one from my tub of water and that one sank. It's recommended that you scratch the seed coating all the way around the seed, trying to thin it down. Um, I found the last time I planted them that as long as, you know, I have a spot here the water can get in. I've got one over here where water can get in and another one here. I think that's quite good. Um, once the water gets into the seed pod, it seems to soften everything up and you know, you can remove this outer shell once the seed uh, swells up and you start to see the root coming out. So there's another one done. There's another one scratched down till you see the light brown color under the seed coating. These baobab seeds will stay viable for many, many years. Um, I've heard people germinating, you know, 15 year old seeds. I even read that 50 year old seeds can still be viable. So you don't have to worry about storing them. They'll just throw them in a dry place and plant them whenever you get time. I was reading that it's best to plant one seed per pot when the uh, 
taproot on these baobabs is young. They're very fragile. So if you plant a whole bunch of seeds in one pot, it's not a good idea to then separate them and put them in their individual pots because you might break off that taproot and it may kill the tree. So one seed per pot is what they recommend. <laughs> Welcome to the world. Very cute. Look how soft their feet are. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Oh, Take okay. it easy, little fella. Give him an egg. Well, I never thought I'd need vice grips for planting seeds, but now I never thought I'd use an oscillating drum sander for planting seeds either. So I brought this out so I can sand the seed coat off a little bit easier than using the file. That was the last seed, so that went quite quite good. It went, I did them quite quickly. Here's a look at the uh, seeds now, so you can see the amount of floaters versus sinkers. I would say it's close to half. Maybe there's a few more floaters than sinkers. So I don't know if that'll change once, you know, they get some liquid in them, maybe they'll sink, or maybe they're just no good, I don't know. But we'll plant them all see what comes up. So the oscillating spindle sander worked really well. It uh, saved me hours and hours of filing. So that really came in handy. My next step is to boil up some water and fill the thermos. I won't put the seeds in the water when it's boiling hot. I'm going to let it cool to, you know, hotter than warm, but not so hot that it would scald your finger. I filled my thermos with the boiling water so I think it's still quite hot. I've let it sit maybe uh, five minutes. So you can see there's a bit of steam coming off the top. But I think that'll be good because these seeds are pretty cool in this uh, rainwater I've got them in. So I'm going to add them to the thermos now. So here I go. So these are all the seeds that sank to the bottom and I'll put those in now. So that's all the seeds in the thermos. So I'm going to let them sit overnight at least. I'll see how they are, you know, tomorrow. So here's the seeds in here. So it's, it's quite hot in the greenhouse here. So there's my thermos in the sun. That'll stay warm for many, many hours. What is the temperature? It is about 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty warm and the humidity is uh, it's about 65 percent which is pretty good in here I've got the door open the baobab seeds are an example of a seed that needs a lot of work before you go and plant it but most seeds you just need to soak them overnight and you can plant them directly into the soil so I've got a bucket of water here and I'm going to go through all the seeds and soak them overnight in this bucket and then we can plant them tomorrow. I've got some camphor tree seeds here. And then this is extra seeds. They look like the same thing, the camphor. So I'll soak those overnight. I'll put those in the bucket. I have a package here of What is it? Uh, black to lepto, 35 seeds. Ah, oh, looks cool. Well, we'll soak those overnight. Here's, of course, Chinese dogwood. Chinese dogwood, wow, that's cool. American hornbeam, oh, that's cool. Okay, so they're going into the bucket too. Okay, I think that should be enough seeds 
for the video tomorrow where we'll be planting all these. Here's a look in the bucket. A ah, maple key just fell in there. So they just dropped from the sky here. I will leave it in there. Yeah, so a lot of seeds have sunk. It's only a few ones that are floating still. So we'll see tomorrow how they do. Maybe more of them will suck up some water and sink down to the bottom. I don't know. So that's a lot of seeds in that bucket now. All the seeds that were in this box came from Dana in Pennsylvania. So thanks a lot. Those are just wonderful. I can't wait to see them growing. The camphor seeds were sent to me by Raphael in Gainesville, Florida. So thanks very much, Raphael. Those are awesome. And it'll be an interesting species to grow as a bonsai. Tina from Nevada sent me some giant sequoia seeds. So I'm going to put those separately in this uh, yogurt container, soak those overnight, and we'll plant those tomorrow also. Thanks, Tina. I've always wanted a giant sequoia. So here I go. The giant sequoia seeds may also be from John from New Jersey. I may have got the envelopes mixed up. So thanks, whoever sent them to me. Well, for a seed planting video, I didn't get any seeds planted today, but I did get a lot of the prep work done. And I think this will turn into a multi-part series. It'll take me a long time to get all these seeds ready and planted. So that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.